Okay, this is the Wooden Boat Show in Depot Bay, or I mean in Toledo, 2019. I'm going to start off with my Berdaka. It's a skin on frame, 19 foot Lucian style kayak with the original paddle. And there's Susan. Check out this video of this boat, this door, this fish You can see the frame. <laughs> and he gets up at 2 a.m. right before out of the tail. Yeah. This is kind of a unique bow design on these. The best explanation I've come across is, is that the bow would cut the wave and then the second bow would ride over and keep the water from coming up and over the bow of the kayak. Very unique design, it's designed for the Alaskan waters up in the uh, Aleutian Islands. And these kayaks were used for seal hunting. Next, we have a century skip. Right back up so you can see the whole thing. Sail. Very nice gaff rig type boat. Clinker built. Next, we have a Glen L Mini Tug it's out of Walport. They've run on the Al Sea River. A little two and a half horse Yamaha motor on it. Doesn't have a name on her. He bought it partially finished and let his uh, son finish it. it. Turned out to be a pretty nice little boat. Another. Interesting rudder set up. Electrics. It was originally a sailing hull and they converted the boat to an electric cruiser. Pretty nice little setup. This is Oban. Another clinker built. You see the, how they did the rivets. Boards are nailed through and then they have a rivet backing that explains it in. A very well built boat. There's another one 
it's got an electric kicker motor on the uh, rudder this time. See if we can drum up some in more interest for next year. Yeah, good idea. Rangely Lake boat. Stripwood belt, fire glass. And another Rangely Lake called Wake Me Two. It's a very similar boat. Boats that are actually for sale. Nice footwork. Unlike most ripwoods, this is a little bit wider um, wood. And she's called Thumper. Out of uh, Pacific City. There were six different species of wood used in this boat. White cedar cedar and redwood, spruce, undern mahogany, This is a very pretty little rowing boat. Be a real, real nice little boat to handle. The next boat in the lineup is a Chandler's canoe, 16 foot, strip wood built. Wicker. Now these are glued up cedar planks that are about a half inch and then it's fiberglassed inside and out after it's been sanded down. They're very, very nice, well-built boats. Very, very pretty boats too. This is more of an eastern woodland style canoe, the way the bow is swept back in and then the tumble home, which is the curved end. This is very more along the lines of what you'd see back in uh, New York State and Ohio, Ontario area. Something that the eastern woodland tribes, a lot like the old birch parks were. Side. This is a Dillabaugh. These were a uh, Dillabaugh rocket. It was actually built in uh, Portland, Oregon. They provided kits or they do ready-made boats. This one was more of a, is more of a runabout. It has an old 18-horse Johnson on it. 
Our friend Babbles has one that has a uh, um, windshield on it, and it has a 35 horse Merc on it, and it gets up and scoots right along. These are really a nice little boat. Really well built, sturdy boat. Long shaft mark for oh, that's nice. yeah. a caker, five horse. Oh, yeah, there's some interesting shapes in the back. Like an arrow. This one's called Raddies. And she needs a little bit of TLC. This is probably one of the prettiest boats here. It's called the Cajun Queen. Look at the bow hatch. Very well designed hatch. And from the bigger boats, we go down to something very small. This is a paddle board that one of the ladies here made. From Chesapeake Light Craft Design. They do real nice work with their designs. This is a wee rob canoe. The seat here goes in and out. This lifts out, folds down. That's pretty common on those for people backing out. Very nice little boat. Doesn't matter if it sits out in the rain. The Rain City Lake boat. The 15 foot. And he's got the oars set up in a very unique way so that you can sit forward and row in the direction of travel. Very unique setup.
fine detail work that he did on the bow of this boat. The compass, very, very nice. And again, this is a strip wood construction. Kind of like the canoe was. Laid up around a plywood frame and then pulled off the frame after it was built and in glass. And here we have another Verdaka kayak. This is a 16 footer. Built by a man in Newport. We built a couple of these kayaks. In this case, he's got some leg braces in here that mine doesn't have to make it a little bit easier uh, for rolling. Very, very nice. This is another one of the skin frame boats. And it's a uh, Greenland style kayak. Made by the same builder as the other Badaka. It's 17 foot. You can see the cockpit is much, much smaller. And the paddle is also much, much shorter for it. This is an upright skiff. I'm going to let you see the story on this one. It's owned by the port. It's a 12 foot spirit sail rig. It was built in 1980. And the boat itself is so weathered and old looking, it looks like it was built in the 1920s. But very, very, very pretty lines on the boat. This clinker built. You can see the rivets. And how they were nailed through and the nails were bent over, which is an older traditional style of building. Solid planked underneath. And it's very, very simple and plain design to it. If you look out on the water, uh, close to the Leadell. Vessel. Thompson runabout. Right by the pavilion, you'll see and the windshield on this one is a lot like and what Babbles has and on his uh, rocket. And uh, we're in about five minutes going to show you various safety aspects of sea kayaking as well as demonstrating various ways to get back in your boat.
and ending up with the kayak rolling. So about five minutes from now, if you want to make your way down here. Meet some of our vendors. And so we're making some paddles down here for down here. Carbon's moors. The Lincoln County Historical Society has a booth down here. A few books that they offer. These are all really good books. Frame for a kayak, a strip wood ca uh, canoe kit. And this is one of the, the boat building projects that they do down here for, at the boat show. They're making some 12 foot punts, or I mean 8 foot punts. And this is after three days of the uh, building. They're just about done with the boats now. We've got about five of them in process. And this is what we end up with. These were built in, in previous years. Painted, stained inside, set up patrol for fishing. They've got a little plate on there that they can mount a small motor, probably a one or two horse, or a small or a uh, larger electric. I'm going to head down onto the dock and we're going to look at the boats that they have actually on the water down here. We also offer kayak tours here. Two points. Um, it's Bart. So on the left is Richard in the green boat. He's got a remote control right, sailboat called Claire. Uh, both of these boats will have plenty of instruction and experience. So we're looking forward to what they will show us. Let's see how the mechanism is lined up in there. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what one has to have to be safe on the water. And he's got a little Number tugboat. One, what would you get? Or they do pushing competitions and shove That's each right. other around with it. They play right water polo uh, with, with it. A whistle okay. Shoving a ball around. You can see it on the internet. It's a variety. They don't usually put the cabs on them. Just this one, this little piece comes off. So on their front deck, Cutie. Now we 
Ned Vidal. She's at Port Registered in Dallas, Oregon. Which is kind of funny because they only have the Rick Wheel River running through there. And there ain't no way that boat's getting up that little river. This is just a work boat that was down here. The little puddle duck. One of our coots, Andy. He's got a gaff rig sail on it. These things are really remarkable sailing, sailing boat. They really perform quite well. Here we have a Calton's bartender. You can kind of see the wings down there. These allowed the double enders to actually get up and plane. But they were made for very rough waters crossing the uh, bars here in Oregon. And to uh, take the pilots out to the ships as they were coming into port. You have to go pretty much slow. Going faster, sure, it's offline. Very, very nice boat. They've got a 40 uh, horse move on. mark and on it. Jeremy is going to show us how to turn a boat around. And again, kayaks are meant to go forward and straight, so they're not real fond of turning around. Either. Very nice boat. Uh, Very well boat built. Turn around really quick. But uh, Jeremy is using what are called sweep strokes, sweeping from the stern away to the bow, and starting way at the bow. Tiny little cutty cab and goes for basically And you notice he's here. edging his boat over, and by edging his boat, he shortens the water line on the boat, which makes it easy. There's very, to very turn. pretty lines on these boats. Perfect form. Good, this is on a video. So now. Uh, these are some of the boat rentals that they have forward. down here. We've stopped, we've gone backwards. So At the boathouse. Let's see, what else do boats need to do? The plywood oh, yeah. rowing boat, kind of like a white hull. So Jeremy is going to demonstrate two strokes that help the boat go sideways. First is called the draw to the hip. And if you do it right, like he's doing it, the You've boat got someone doing some paddling demonstrations. Edging one way or another. Now he's going to do sculling draw. This is a new boat house. Uh, Richard, getting better. First of all, let's say maturing, most people but, uh, um, slowly. Really don't want to free dog. Oh, you uh, do it, Kids, they're like the cats, but big people, uh, not so much. Uh, so Richard's going to show you how to apply cats. Couple eyes. more. So he's tipping his boat over, and then he's bringing his boat back up. One of the eight-foot punts that they built, and then a little kind of canoe, well, maybe eight-foot long. On, uh, build that probably maybe a sheet and a half of plywood. Uh, what happens is, he's, like his boat is starting to go off to his right Dr. side. Dr. Petora. So what's happening, he's got small, weight Small on compact his right tug. Body, and his head is trying to stay out of the water. And so to come right side up. Powered by about, a, looks like a 10 horse. the opposite movement with your body and your head. Uh, which is counterintuitive. So these bracing strokes uh, really are something that needs to be practiced until it becomes automatic. And he's used both a low Walk rate about. and paddles low and a high rate for the paddles high. So you have two different ways of doing that. So this is one way to prevent swimming. Most adults don't like to swim. That's why they buy these big old fat boats. They think they're never going to turn over. But they will. Build over the winter in Diamond Lake. 
So, uh, in the event that the equation uh, stroke don't prevent a capsize, we're going to have a capsize, which Jeremy is going to do. And here's what happens. <laughs> so we we uh, We've been waiting. When the boat's up to down. He's going to bang and look at the artwork the that they did so in there. Everybody around him knows that something's going on. And one way to think about it is if you're looking out in the water and you see something white, think white's not right. That means the boat's upside down. So Jeremy's going to capsize. He's going to bang on his boat. He's going to release the stress, which is keeping the water out of his boat right now. So many of those and then, he's going to exit his boat, just like taking off his pants. Yeah, very nice little boat to uh, be, come off. be out in. And Jeremy, do you still have your paddle? Oh, he, he does. We don't yeah, have as many boats. Boat. Yeah, Both good things. So now he's going to lay back and uh, give him the support of his life jacket and his foot in the boat. And he's going to insert the paddle float onto one of the paddle blades. And then attach it. It's really a drag. You've got everything blown up and the paddle float comes loose. So it's going to make sure it doesn't come off the blade. Now he's got it in place. And think, a lot of these things happen uh, in cold water. Uh, so you don't want to take off very such an elegant solution to the whole thing. You sit the rail. You talk and then you wander. Then you sit for a while and talk. The spirit rig sailing craft. Very pretty, pretty boat. It seems a little quieter today than yesterday. Just a gorgeous, nice boat. Man, the wind's in here. The spirit rig sail is real nice on it. So now Richard is going to show us a faster way of getting back in the boat without the you know, they make these knobs to put bolts in. Yeah. So you can get those for the bolt side. Like, and like those kind of the plastic knobs, yeah. yeah. Like plastic like T knobs. You get them. I have a few and I use their small. Don't know if they make them that big, but they probably do. Yeah. And they're rolling on. A bunch of places so people make them. Another one of our Coots boats. Can't do it for it. We're going to have Jeremy. That way you don't have to be Richard, come on over this way. I'll let you play with it. We're going to have Jeremy uh, help Richard get back in his boat and empty the boat. It's a nice old setup. All right. So Richard made his wet exit. So how are you doing today? Guys, we got everything over the sun crammed in here, I guess. He's going to ask Richard to open Just about. <laughs> and then ask him if he wants some help getting back in the boat. Oh, look, Jeremy's bringing Richard's boat. This is a very pretty boat. I've seen it up on the uh, trailer a few times. I've never seen her on the water. It's called the Moonlit Turtle. Well, when you get up to the same time, that's a lot of water. It's powered by about a... It looks like a 9.9 .9 horse. It's a very, very pretty boat. Is originally a sailing design, Sharpie Dory. Can you see the detail work that he did on his woodwork up on the bow here. Did a very very nice job with this boat. Strip wood built on the hull. Looks like plywood side uh, and uh, probably a plywood decking on the hull.
they did strip wood for the gunnels. Just very, very nicely done by the way. Lazy J, another tug. Looks like the Glen L again. And there's the huh. uh, this is fun. So if you take See, a six stand here. per window, all the blinds by five windows, do the math. Uh, Can you still go to Paul City? The wood that the bill's all in. Yeah. So they've all got to be fitted perfectly to match the hole you cut in there. Ben F. Another older wooden hold cruising cruiser. Very nice old boat. And needs some TLC, but all in all, very nice condition. This is a so, new boat that John Cohen is having built. A Whitehall rowing boat, 12 foot long. And it's going to be skin on, um, a lot like my um, Burdaka kayak. The basket weave frame, and it's going to have the Dacron um, skin put over it. Here's the information that he's got on her. How about that? A whole lot better than doing a paddle for self rescue and a whole lot better than having to have a well, This is gonna be a very nice boat quicker. when it's done. I well, think it's gonna pad absolutely beautifully. Partner, uh, they figure John figures that it's gonna be maybe thirty to thirty five pounds once it's been completed. Now the next three boats are called Teak Ladies. I'm not going to be able to zoom in on them, but I'll do what I can. These were built before World War II as a racing boat. They're around 17, a little over 17 foot. They're a teak sloop. They were built 1937 in Hong Kong. And there were only a handful of them made. And there are three left that they know of. And all three are here at the uh, port. Chihan. Here's a story about them. Seen this one up on a boat trailer at the at the Depot Bay Wooden Boat Show. And they're just a very, very pretty boat. third one and I'll be coming around the boathouse here in a few minutes and we'll get a closer look at her Semezu
And this is the boat house that they actually build some boats in as part of a community project. And they've got another punt going in here. Excuse me. Did, uh, did you step step aboard the two ladies? No. If you look inside, each one has a hand carved pictograph, uh, a Chinese pictograph that tells how each boat got its name. Okay. So if you're into it, I'll have to do picture. that. Yeah, and they're they're all open. Go ahead, have a okay. look. Okay, I'll go I'll go do that. I'm gonna take a, post this video on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. So see if we can get some more uh, people interested. Yeah. Cool. So they've got a very nice little shop set up down here. And I'll start off in the same order that I went on. The first, John Mall. pictographs that he was telling us about. And these were built as a racing sloop for a class um, prior to the war. And there were only a handful, like I say, only about 14 of them made. And they've got three of them here. And these are the only three that they know of that are still in existence and on the water. And we'll try this one more time. Having a hard time seeing the screen on this iPad. Okay. Uh, the Chi Hong and it's by the palace gate. Yeah, I remember seeing this one at Depot Bay um, a few years ago up on a trailer. It was uh, one that they sailed from Monterey Bay, California, all the way to Honolulu, Hawaii in 1940. Is that, is that thing able to take a pretty good picture that way? Actually, it does. Yeah, I've been very impressed with these iPads. This is an iPad 3 uh, mini. And I've got it going on video right now. And it does a very, very nice job. But these carvings are just beautiful. Okay. It was built as a, actually as a gift for a guy. And then when they got it to San Francisco, everybody fell in love with the boat. So he and his dad got together. And, well, I think the first order was for about 14. Yeah. And they, uh, they brought them all in for the uh, exposition, the opening of the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. I to hit you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they sailed as a fleet on San Francisco Bay for a number of years. And uh, we ended up getting 
getting started, they donated that one to us, and uh, Rick did some repairs on it. Um, but, well, actually, we had to fix some stuff on it this year. But And then, well, once we got that one, uh, some folks heard we had a teak lady, and they donated this one to us. Uh, she was intact, but hadn't been in the water for a long time. But they were in their 80s and you know said hey we're not using the boat you guys might as well have it uh, anyway after a few years boring here I kind of got involved with things and uh, we started a website and uh, a guy down in California he's he was actually the just retiring as the uh, see now when he was the supervisory carpenter for the San Francisco Maritime Museum. And, uh, anyway, he says, I, I've got a teak lady. Uh, he says, I'm going to be retiring, and I'm actually thinking about selling it. I said, oh, yeah. And they, I said, well, what do you want for it? And, uh, at first, I just figured that he had said $25,000. But I called him the back the next day, and I said, Chris, I heard you right. You, you said $25,000, did not you? He says, no. I said $2,500. That's all you want for it? He says, well, if she's going to be up there with her sisters, you have a nice little fleet. And I know you guys know how to take care of them. Yeah. So now we got the very first one, the middle one, and the last one. Uh, yep, we're going to go get some video of that last one and yeah, before I run out of battery power. Might be a bit messy in there, but... These are really nice boats. Yeah, the cardboard boat racers. <laughs> I believe there were three heaps. Uh, those are mine. Some of the signs from previous shows. <laughs> Yep. card and if you have any questions you can give me a call or send oh, me yeah. an email. This is the third one that we have here. It's an amazing. You can see her deck hasn't been stained. Just bare teak. See, these are nicely sloop rigged. on this one. 